In our last discussion, we introduced the concept of earth materials. We talked briefly about where they come from originally, in the sense that they form from atoms that were once nebula um, out in space. And then we had turned our attention specifically to minerals, which are the building blocks of rocks and therefore of our planet. We considered what the definition of a mineral was, and we looked at the internal structure of a mineral. Now, we're going to look at the rocks themselves. We're going to broaden our viewpoint and consider all the different kinds of materials that we call rock on this planet. We're going to realize that there are three fundamentally different kinds of rocks. You may already know this from an earlier course or from even a, a kindergarten class because it's common knowledge. But we're going to try to understand in a little more detail what makes these different groups distinctive. Where do you actually see rock? Well, in some places, you don't see very much of it. For example, if you're flying over an urban area, you may mostly see buildings. In other words, you'll be seeing concrete, uh, tile, other kinds of material, asphalt, that are covering the ground surface. If you fly over an agricultural area, you'll see fields covered by vegetation, and under the vegetation, soil, which we'll discuss a bit more later. But there are some places where if you look down from the window of an airplane, you'll actually see cliffs and barren exposures in which rock is exposed. We call such exposures bedrock because the rock that they're composed of is attached to the earth underneath and is continuous with rock all the way down to the base of the crust. Let's look a little bit more closely at an exposure of rock and its surroundings. Here we see an example of where bedrock forms the cliff at the top of this small hill. The steep-sided slopes are held up by the strength of this rock so that it forms a cliff. Beneath the slope, we see an area where there's loose sediment or debris. It's pretty obvious that much of this formed by tumbling down from the cliffs above when rock broke off of the cliff. As you come down to the base of the cliff, down into the valley, you see that part of the ground is covered by vegetation and part of the ground is covered by soil which is basically material that's been reworked by interaction with organisms and has been changed as rainwater has percolated through it over time. Because there's lots of rock at the surface, it's not bedrock. Basically, any loose boulder or pebble is an example of rock that is not bedrock. So where do you see bedrock? Well, as we've already shown, some bedrock occurs in natural outcrops. An outcrop is a natural exposure of rock that uh, appears because it's not covered by soil, or vegetation. In some cases, in some parts of the world, we wouldn't see much bedrock were it not for the activities of people or of eroding forces. For example, some exposures of bedrock are stream cuts that have been exposed as a consequence of the downcutting process by the river. Similarly, in some places, we see bedrock that's exposed by the grinding action of glaciers over the land surface. In some cases, bedrock exposures are artificially formed created perhaps during the production of a road cut to put in a highway or a railroad cut to put in a railroad. Okay, so now we've got a sense of what rock looks like and where you might see it. What is a rock? Well, in a general sense, most rocks are aggregates of minerals. There are some rocks, relatively rare, that are actually masses of glass. We'll leave those aside for the time being and focus on the more common rocks, the rocks that are aggregates of minerals. If you look inside a rock, magnify it with a microscope, you'll see that there are different ways in which the grains of minerals are bonded together. In a so-called clastic texture rock, the grains are individual pieces that have been cemented together by minerals precipitated out of water solutions that once pass through the spaces between the grains. In the case of a crystalline texture rock, the strength of the rock exists because the, the individual mineral grains have intergrown with one another. As I mentioned earlier, geologists divide all rocks into basically three simple categories based on how they form. The igneous rocks are rocks that formed ultimately by cooling from a melt. The sedimentary rocks are rocks that form either by the cementation together of individual clasts those kinds of sedimentary rocks, as we'll see, are called clastic rocks, or they form by precipitation directly from water solutions near the surface of the earth or at the surface of the earth, or by organisms that extract ions out of solution and build shells from them. The final kind of rock are called metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic 
sounds like metamorphism for a good reason. The root of the word means to change, and metamorphic rocks are rocks that are formed by changing pre-existing rocks. We'll see that that process generally happens in the solid state by the migration of atoms, but we'll come back to that later.